Good morning and welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs uh, learn, network and grow. I'm uh, Roger Killen and today Rebecca Ari is training us on how to uplevel our life and our business by ditching the shiny object, object syndrome. Rebecca, first of all, a couple of questions for you. Yes, indeed. You're a seasoned entrepreneur. What, I am. What would you say is the single biggest problem for entrepreneurs today? I think the single biggest problem, probably especially for digital entrepreneurs, is that we are not super sure about our mission and so we get easily distracted. There are all kinds of beautiful programs and courses and things to take care of. And because we're not super focused and clear, we don't have total clarity about what our mission and our purpose is. It's super easy for us to get distracted and chase our tails, if you will, and spend a lot of time doing that, that we could spend building our businesses. Ah, oh, okay. And my second question is this. Uh, as a as a serial entrepreneur, I am convinced that there is one aspect of entrepreneurship that really really uh, uh, appeals to you. It's why you get up in the morning. Can you share what that is with us? I am probably an um, an adventure addict, um, so <clears throat> I don't tend to do anything halfway ever since I was a kid. So I didn't just have one child, I had seven. And then I foster in addition. I didn't just have one business, I had several. So I tend to do everything that I do all the way. I love the adventure. I love the adventure of starting something new and bringing it all the way to success before my visions expand to something new or something different. So probably adventure. I love the adventure of business and making and seeing dreams come true for myself and my clients. Adv adventure and shiny object syndrome are kissing cousins, I would guess. Hey, you know what? You're not wrong. You are not wrong. <laughs> Participants, <clears throat> if you have questions, would you type them into the chat? And in the course of Rebecca's presentation, uh, when I see her transitioning from one topic to the next, I will ask for permission to stop and pose your questions to her. By the end of the talk, you have had answers to all your questions. Now, you'll be sending a link a little bit later in the day to the recording of Rebecca's training, but uh, take notes anyway, because the simple act of taking notes is going to help you absorb about 30% more than would be the case if you didn't take notes. Uh, Rebecca, are you ready to rock the stage? I'm ready. Let's do this. All yours. Get rocking. Austin, Texas is in, the, is in the house. Here we go. Thank you so much, Roger, for the uh, invitation to be here with y'all. I am super excited. This is definitely a passion of mine. And I, I suffered. I, have, have, I did suffer for years with shiny object syndrome. There was always something new. There was always some new course or program or I, I even said for a season of life, this is the season I'm doing all the things. I'm going to do all the things. And I didn't even apologize for it. I did. I signed up for everything. And then I realized that there is a huge consequence to that when you find yourself over your head with all the commitments that you've made. And so I had to figure out, I had to figure out a solution. And that's what I have done. So today I'm super excited to share with you how to ditch shiny object syndrome once and for all, and without fear of missing out on all the shiny things, because that's half the reason we get, we get the new program or the new course, or we have to check our email or our social media is that we're afraid we're going to miss out on something. Well, if I don't get the course now, it will be more expensive later. If I don't check my email now, there's going to be something that needs a response right this second that I can't. I can't wait for. So part of ditching shiny object syndrome is getting rear, rid of our FOMO, our, our fear of missing out. So what is shiny object syndrome anyway? I had a teacher once um, and he wasn't talking about shiny object syndrome. He was talking about something else, but someone asked him for a definition and he said, well, I can't, I can't absolutely define it, but I know it when I see it. 
And that's kind of how shiny object syndrome is. I can't really define it, but I know it when I see it, even in myself. I know it because I'm constantly scattered. I'm, I'm chasing this course and this program and this Facebook page and this Twitter post, and I have to check my email and, oh, I'm, I'm a mom of many, so, oh, and I have to do the dishes and the laundry and the baby needs a diaper change. So those are some of the, um, the problems with shiny object syndrome. Like we're, we're everywhere. We're so scattered that we can't take a second and close our eyes. I thought this picture was a beautiful analogy of everywhere that our thoughts are going when we're suffering with shiny object syndrome. I discovered that there are super easy ways to justify this, right? So especially as, as an entrepreneur or as a parent, we justify these things. We can justify the next course because we're gonna learn the thing that's going to help our business gain traction. We justify constantly checking our email or our social media because it's part of our job or it's part of what we need to do. So uh, I, I was interested to find out when I did this original research that shiny objects object syndrome is called that because anybody who has children knows that you shake a rattle in front of a baby and, and they're immediately done with whatever they were doing before. And they're going to follow the rattle or the shiny light, or it's like a kitten, you know, those kitten videos on YouTube where you shine the light and the kitten chases the, the light everywhere. Cause they can't, they can't hold their concentration for a second. So we call it shiny object syndrome because it's something that animals and young people with a lack of focus suffer from. And it's not suffering for them, of course, but it, but it is for us. There are serious consequences that we pay and that I paid for shiny object syndrome. So a little bit of my history, I started my first, well, I started my first business when I was 12, and, but my first real business when I was 20 with my husband. And two years after we started that business, we signed our first million dollar contract. So um, 20, 20 somethings as I, I was a rather arrogant 20 something. <laughs> and so I thought, well, I did it once I can do it again. And so I ventured into a food business and uh, I died a death of a thousand paper cuts. It was, it was a horrifying failure. And after that, I realized that I, I was afraid to start again. And so I spent thousands of dollars. I, I actually, to this day, have not added up all the money that I've spent on courses and programs because I'm, I'm literally a little bit afraid to know. But part of that was that I invested that, that money to feed my fear of missing out or not knowing and really my fear of failure. And that led to a whole library of unfinished courses. And what I began to realize is that this week's shiny object syndrome becomes next week's unfinished project because I would get the course and it doesn't take too long to realize that the shiny object that I thought was going to solve all my problems that I had to handle, had to have right then is actually hard work. It's actually becoming a master of that project or that course, which ended up leading me to be frustrated and not finishing. And other areas of my life began to suffer because of my chasing all of the things. So I would be sitting at my computer looking for the next opportunity, trying to figure out how to start the next business or what was I going to do now? And my husband didn't get a date for a month and that doesn't make him very happy. And my kids would see, you know, they all only see this part of mom's face because mom's always got her face behind her laptop. I, I gained 10 pounds. I don't know how that happened. Maybe because I'm always sitting behind my computer. Um, so there are serious consequences to shiny object syndrome that we don't always take into account when, we're, when we have the sales page in front of us, or we hear the ding of Facebook on our phone, or we know an email just came in. We don't consider the consequences to our mental state, to our relationships, to our health, when we're just looking at all the beauty of the shiny object syndrome. So why do we have it? Especially entrepreneurs. So entrepreneurs are my focus. Um, I, I have been one since I was old enough to, to run an ad in a local newspaper. So understanding shiny object syndrome comes down to, the research says that it comes down to a lack of clarity. 
we're not clear about, sometimes we're not clear about the big things. What is my mission in life? What is my purpose? Why am I here? So as entrepreneurs, there's something inherently special about what we do. Even if you're a coach, there might be thousands of other coaches out there, but there's something inherently special about the way you coach and what you do. Roger, you give us a, a, a platform to share our message and the way you do it and how you invite and, and who you find is inherently special and different. And we don't have clarity a lot of times as entrepreneurs about what our mission is. Because of that, we don't have a defined purpose. This is my purpose. This is what I do. This is what I do in this day, in this week, and in this month. Without that defined purpose, we're easily distracted. I was raised um, in a little tiny town in South Dakota, and my dad always took me to Sunday school, and my Sunday school teacher would say, Rebecca, you can't be blown about by every wind of doctrine. That's what he would say. Is a old gentleman. He had all bushy eyebrows and he said, can't be blown about by every wind of doctrine. And, and I find that it might not be doctrine, but, but as entrepreneurs, especially in the di digital space, we do get blown about. We, we get blown up. Now we need copywriting and now we need Facebook ads and now we need coaching. And now we need, look, there's a million beautiful courses and opportunities out there, but what is our purpose? And when we know that, certain things become less shiny because it's not our purpose. The other thing that adds to shiny object syndrome is a lack of metrics. We don't measure our metrics. Some, sometimes as entrepreneurs, we don't even know what our metrics are. So how, how many followers did we get yesterday? How many people watched this video? How many people were added to my list? And it's not just business, right? It comes to Health, for instance, um, what is my actual weight? Not, not the weight that I put on my driver's license because to be very honest, that wasn't true the day I put it there, but I was gonna lose those 10 pounds. So I felt okay about putting it on my driver's license. What are the actual metrics? What are the metrics of our relationships? When's the last time you sat down and passionately kissed your spouse? That's a metric, but we don't look at those things. We just kind of go through living life and it leads us to, being attracted by the shiny things that come across our screen. So coming back to entrepreneurship, these last things really specifically deal with entrepreneurs. Um, I've been an entrepreneur for a long time, uh, longer, more decades than I would probably like to confess. Um, and one thing that becomes a burden is consistency. So how many of us as entrepreneurs know that we should be posting daily, every other day, at least every week on our social media platforms, we should be communicating with our audience. And how many of us have ever sat in front of a blank screen or hit live on our Facebook feed and went, I have nothing to say. I don't know what to say. It stops us from being consistent. It, it becomes a burden because we don't know what to say. We don't have accountability. So this one, this one is a big one, right? Because if you ask me in the evening when I'm full of energy, what are you going to do tomorrow, Rebecca? The vision I will weave for you of all the magical things I'm going to accomplish the next day will amaze and astound you. But if you ask me at five o'clock in the morning when the baby's crying and my alarm is going off, the picture is going to look a little bit different. So the problem is, as entrepreneurs, who are we accountable to? We're accountable to ourselves. We're accountable to our clients too, but most people don't know the big visions that we have in our head because we keep them right here between our ears. And the problem with that is that the biggest terrorist in the world also lives between our ears and we negotiate with that terrorist. Well, I'll sleep in a little bit later today. The baby was up three times last night. I have too much stuff. There's 10 emails I need to respond to. And we're not accountable to the big things that move the needle in our life and our business. We have a lack of accountability. And all of this leads to shiny object syndrome out of control. It also leads to a lack of balance. So balance, so as entrepreneurs, we can get our businesses going, right? I've been in conferences and for the next three weeks, I'm man, I am after my business. And after those three weeks, 
I noticed that my husband is irritable <laughs> because I haven't paid any attention to him. My kids haven't, so I'm a homeschooling mom. My kids haven't done their math in at least a week. And, and somehow, again, clearly is an issue for me. I've gained five pounds. Like what the heck happened? My life is completely out of balance. So we don't, I don't have that. Ultimately, shiny in object syndrome leads not only to a lack of success, it leads us to have a really expensive hobby and not necessarily a business, which is hard words to say, right? They're hard words to hear. Nobody wants to hear that. But if we're really going to take on shiny object syndrome and take the next year by storm, take the next quarter by storm, the next month, take tomorrow by storm, we need to have the hard conversations and determine what is the real cost of shiny object syndrome. As we all laugh about it and joke and shiny squirrel and let's, let's face it, but there are real costs that come as a result of shiny object syndrome. It leads us into <clears throat> a cycle of failure. So our fuzzy goals become untethered and unrealistic excitement about the next exciting thing, the next thing we're going to learn, the next thing that's going to get us traction in our business or get us a bigger audience or more customers. And that excitement, because it is unrealistic and is undergirded by what is really the hard work of mastery, leads us to get frustrated fast. And that frustration leads us to pick our eyes up and notice the next shiny object. And so the cycle starts again. Shiny object, fuzzy goal, unrealistic excitement. Now I'm frustrated again and I'm looking for something else. So that cycle of failure can be really vicious and we need to get out of it. Rebecca, you up for a question? I am. And uh, this, this is my question. In 1980, I dumped the boss because I wanted control over my own situation. Is it, is the shiny object syndrome uh, unique to entrepreneurs or do corporate employees suffer from the same, uh, the same uh, temptations? You know, Roger, I think we as people suffer from the same temptations. So if, if I'm working a job, right, if, if, I'm, if I'm a corporate um, intrapreneur, they call corporate people intrapreneurs, and I want to do my best at my job, but I have subordinates and peers who need my attention. I have emails that need my attention. I have family that needs my attention. I don't in working a job, how many times do we have the clarity of purpose saying in this job, this career that I've chosen, this is my mission. This is my mission. Most times, even with people who've had the same career for years and years, their mission is, well, this is my job. This is what I do. This is my career. But it, it doesn't go so far as to say, this is what I'm going to do this week. This is what I know is going to move the needle for me and my company in my career today and this week and this month. So that lack of clarity still applies to people who work corporate jobs. It applies especially to us as entrepreneurs because we're, we don't have that inherent accountability that intrapreneurs have. But it, even, even that, Roger, it, it applies to all the areas of life, right? So it applies to our, our physical fitness. Like, are we clear about what health really means to us? Is it is it a certain weight? Is it a certain size of jeans? Is it just being able to climb the stairs and not getting breathless? Like these are questions that really apply anywhere. And those shiny objects can kind of hit us from the ether in any area that, that we happen to be thinking about, right? So if I notice that my, well, I can't button my jeans anymore. I can button my jeans. But if I were to notice that I couldn't button my jeans, and something comes across my Facebook feed about the next wonderful diet that's going to help me lose 20 pounds before Christmas, well, all of a sudden that's attractive to me. So any area of life can be susceptible to shiny object syndrome. The key is knowing what success means to you in those areas. So there is a solution, right? So we have the seven C's that Can are- I ask you another question? Oh, yes. Ask away. This is from Sherwin. Uh, how do you know when it's time to quit and move on versus shiny object syndrome? That is a fantastic question. I love that question. 
So let's talk about the seven powers of success because the seventh power addresses that exact question. So the seven powers of success are the things that we need in order to finally and forever defeat shiny object syndrome without fear of missing out on the next big thing. So the first thing we talked about just a little bit already, right? Getting clarity. We need to get crystal clear about our mission. Why are we here? Why do we do the things we do? Why do I eat the way I do? Why do I have the job that I have? Why have I started the business that I have? So sure, when this, this actually, this first point even goes to your question of how do you know when it's time to quit? Well, let's talk about what, what is your mission in life? What do you do that no one else could do? That's going to lend clarity to if you're doing something that's essentially not going to fulfill you long-term, maybe not be successful and yep. maybe not fulfill you in the long-term. So first we get clear about our mission. And, and a lot of people will say, well, my mission is to, <clears throat> to help people. Okay. And how do you do that? Specifically you, as opposed to the 5,000 people down the road that also want to help people. Cause we all want a better world. We all want to help people but we're all unique and powerful people in our own right. And owning that and discovering who you are and why you're here gives you an inherent clarity about where you want to go from here. Once you have that clarity, and let, let's just be clear about that clarity, sometimes it changes, right? Who I was and my mission when I was 20 or when I was 25 and I had four kids under seven and I was starting a medical business and I like... My purpose in life was a lot different than it is now at this unnamed age that I am with seven children and four grandchildren and two foster children under two. Like my mission in life now is way different. So don't be afraid of that clarity and that mission changing, but there are gifts that you inherently have that you need to offer to the world. So once you're clear about that in this season of life, it's time to get conscious, right? Get conscious about where you really are. So take stock in, in whatever area of life that you're, that you're dealing with. So if we talk about entrepreneurship, we talk about business, what are your metrics? Where are you really? How many, how many clients do you actually have? What's your revenue? What, what, how many people do you add? How, what is your advertising? What is your marketing plan? What are your products? What are your price points? All of these things are powerful delineators for knowing where you are. And if you don't know where you're starting, you're not going to get anywhere because you, anywhere will do because you don't know where you actually are now. So once you've gotten conscious about the metrics, and again, to your point, Roger, that can go across fields of life, right? Getting conscious about what your health actually is. So I have a husband and not, not to pick on men at all, but my husband is one of those guys who doesn't go to the doctor, right? He, he was like, babe, What's the doctor going to say to me? I need to lose a few pounds. I already know that. So he never did. And by the time he actually went to the doctor, I took him to the urgent care and he was in a, in a real health crisis. Like one of those, you're going to check in and you might not check out because he wasn't really conscious of his health. Thank God he's still with me. So all, all is good there, but it is a good illustration of what it means to not totally be conscious of where you are. Once you're conscious, we move to the third step and that's creation creation of the future that you want to get to. So once you know where you are, you can say, well, I'm, I'm here. When, when I started out, I was here in a little tiny town in South Dakota and there were no people, just cattle. <laughs> and I knew that I wanted something bigger. I knew that I wanted something more. And so I began to define and really create that, that future that I wanted. And at that point in my life, I could only go about five years into the future. And now I go another five years, but the whole picture looks different, but specifically creating that future. And I say specifically because we all say, well, what's my goal? I, I want to earn more money. Okay. How, how much money do you want to earn? How many clients do you want to have? What impact do you want to have on your clients? All of these specific questions are your metrics for success. And once you understand where you want to go, then you can identify those metrics. And once you have clarity and you're conscious of where you are and where you want to go, if you know those things, and just as an example, if those things don't involve copywriting, 
and you have a shiny, ooh, your business will be revolutionized if you learn to copyright, you're not as attracted to that because you know it's not your mission. And you know day to day what your mission is. Once you've created your destination, it's time to codify the plan, right? So when we say codify the plan, we say, here's where we are and here's where we want to go. This is where we want to be in a year. Let's just, let's just start with a year. Well, you could do three years or five years, but we're going to start with a year. This is where I want to be in a year. So we're going to use modern methods to reverse engineer that goal to say, this is what I need to accomplish in this quarter and this month and this week and this day. So we know solid what is going to move the needle in our physical fitness and our relationships and our business every day. And you know what? That might sound a little overwhelming. I know it did to me the first time I, I started thinking about this, but I, I'll never forget Bill Gates is, I think it's Bill Gates is the one that said, we underestimate what we can do in a year and we overestimate what we can do in a day. So we have never ending to-do list. What are you going to do today? Well, I don't know. I have this list of 50 things I'd like to get done today. And that same to-do list chases us all the way down day after day. And some of those things have been there for weeks, if we're honest with ourselves. But if we knew the four things that we need to do to really move the needle in our business today, what do I need to do today? Maybe it's, I need to go, I need to do a Facebook live. I need to finish the the video for my course. I need to, whatever the next two things are, you know, when those things, four things are done, everything else is, is frosting. It's, it's gorgeous, right? You have achieved what you need to achieve and you know exactly where you're going because you've codified it. So the last three are superpowers and, and they're especially, especially important for entrepreneurs. So that the fifth one is commitment. So we commit to consistency. Once we've codified the plan, we commit and, and maybe we can only commit a week at a time, right? So, so for me, because I love adventure, a week is about my limit. I, I, I know my plan for the year and the quarter and the month, but the week is really important to me. I'm not afraid to pivot at the week point. Every week I look at my goals and, and if I want to pivot, I pivot. It's okay. But for that week, I know, and I commit to the consistency for that week because as entrepreneurs, consistency can be a burden. It can be a blank screen and you're in total control of everything you do. So that commitment to consistency is a big deal. The sixth one is having a core of accountability. So accountability is, we've already talked about it a little bit. It can be kryptonite for entrepreneurs because we are accountable only to ourselves. Our big dreams live right here between our ears and we're not super accountable to other people. We're accountable to our clients. And if we have employees, we're accountable to them. But the big dreams, the really game-changing dreams that we want to accomplish, usually not many people know about that. As, as a wife, there was a season that I went through. I didn't even tell my husband what my big dreams were. I just wanted to show him. I'm just going to prove it to him. Well, guess what happened? I, I negotiated with the terrorists between my ears and nothing happened. I didn't show anybody because I didn't tell anyone and I didn't take the action. I needed to take consistency consistently with accountability to make those things happen. So sure, when I'm going to come back again to your question here in counting the cost. So the cost, counting the cost is asking yourself, once you have the first six C's in place and something comes along you now have a filter to objectively and calmly without unrealistic excitement, evaluate opportunities that come your way, right? So is this opportunity that's coming your way or a possible shift, maybe, maybe it's time for a business change, does it serve your purpose? Your purpose as an entrepreneur, your purpose as a person, that thing that makes you different and special. Sometimes that, that power is going to shine irrespective of the actual thing that you're doing. So will this shift serve that mission? Are you clear about where it will take your business or your finances? Is it something that only you can do? So if it's something only you can do and it's a shiny object, then go get it. Absolutely. If it's something that will take your focus off your mission, then you probably don't want to do that. If you're not sure, if you're like, well, 
maybe I do want to be a copywriter. Okay, guess what? Take some time and think about that. Think about the actual work that's that's involved in, in taking on the new opportunity. Sometimes all we do, our entire decision-making process of a shiny object is reading the sales page. Well, guess what? Sales pages are meant to make it sound wonderful and easy and anybody could do it. All you need to do is watch these videos. Okay, deep down, we all know that's not true. But if you really want to be a copywriter, maybe that's your deal. If you really want to be a course creator, maybe you do need that. But taking time calmly to sleep on it and think about our mission and what we're conscious of, the facts in our life, the future we want to create and what we're committed to, all of a sudden shiny objects don't look so shiny when we put them through the filter of the first six C's. So that filter alters your worldview so that shiny, the only shiny things are the things that will support your integral mission in life. And that's what's really important. So if we follow the seven powers of success, we move into a cycle of success where we have a clear purpose. Rebecca, I have a couple of questions. Could we deal with those now? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, Sh uh, Shireen, apologies about mispronouncing your name. Shireen, it is going forward. Muhammad, a uh, question from Muhammad. If it's true that you can't rely on one source of income, then how can you multiply your sources of income without losing the ones you already have? Say that question to me again, Roger. If it's true that you can't rely on one source of income, then how can you multiply your sources of income without losing the ones you already have? And if it's true that you cannot rely on one source of income, you cannot. You... You can't, his word is can't, C-A-N, apostrophe T. Got it. Okay. So I, I don't know that I accept that proposition, <laughs> that you can't rely on one source of income. I think it, it's sometimes wise to not put all your eggs in the same basket. So that could definitely be true. Can't, I'm not a big believer in can't. can't yeah, you can. I mean, for instance, you look at, um, look at Russell Brunson. All of his all of his income comes from funnels. All of it. All of it. It comes from funnels. Now, if you take him as an example, yes, it comes from funnels and teaching people about funnels and programs about funnels and events about funnels and private coaching about funnels and employees about but, but it's all his core mission, his purpose is empowering entrepreneurs through the power of funnels, right? So when you talk about adding streams of income, look at people who have done it. So we all have, if it's true that we're all individuals, we're unique and powerful in our own way. So, so I'm different than you, Mohammed. My, my purpose is gonna be different. Even if we're both, for instance, even if we're both coaches, me as a coach and you as a coach, we're going to be totally different. How we approach problems, our base of knowledge, it's all different. So what's, what's my mission and my purpose in life? Once I have that signature piece and I want to then say, okay, I have this signature piece. This is, I, I coach, if, if you want to call it that, on, on defeating shiny object syndrome. Well, that's wonderful. And then once I had done that for a while, I decided, you know what, this is a, this is a universal problem. So let's create a movement of entrepreneurs who are totally relentlessly committed to success. And let's have that group over here. Let's have a, a program here where I can talk to people individually about maximizing their business and not being subject to shiny object syndrome anymore. So the answer to your question, A, is I think you can do one thing. B, sometimes that looks like identifying your core purpose and then branching out with natural ripples to, to your integral purpose that will serve more people in different ways and bring new streams of income into your business. Are there other questions, Roger? Yeah, one more from, okay. uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Vagul. 
Does the shiny object syndrome get worse post the social media world? Does it uh, help during the transition if one reduces time spent on social media? I, I think it does. I, I yes. <laughs> I, I think we all know that it does, right? So social media is designed, it's programmed um, to stop our scroll, right? We're scrolling. It, it started as I, I, I got on Facebook. Well, and it, it goes to show you how old I am. I got on Facebook too, because I wanted, I wanted to see what my kids were up to and what my sisters were up to. And I'm going to keep in touch with family this way. And now if you look at my feed, I'm going to see Lord, the things that you'll see all kinds of things that have nothing to do with my original purpose, because the algorithm has identified, oh, Rebecca is interested in um, self-improvement. Rebecca is an entrepreneur. Rebecca is, um, Rebecca has many children. <laughs> Rebecca is interested in foster care. So all of these things come around to program that algorithm with one goal to distract you and to get you to click on something that probably 98% of the time has nothing to do with your purpose in life. So at the very least, I would recommend putting a, an extension on your browser that says 30 minutes of scroll time on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or Instagram or all of them, whatever it is that, that suits you. Because some people, like my kids don't go on Facebook, they're on Instagram. And, and I'm not on Instagram. So whatever it is that you know what it is for you, limit it. But more than that, I, I would challenge you to turn it around. Use Facebook as your tool. Use social media as your tool. So when I go on social media, I know exactly. I have a, a list of places that I go. I go to my own page and I, and I post live. I post something. Um, I interact with my audience and then there are certain groups that I'm committed to consistently providing content in and I just go there. That's it. That's it. And then I get off and I'm, and I'm done and I will not allow myself to, to go to, to scroll my general feed because I'm relentlessly committed to the creation of the future that I've put down in my step four. When I codified my future, that's it. That's, that's where I'm going. And if you're going to take me off track on that, then you better be one of my children because you, then you deserve my attention and I'll, I'll look up for you. You better be my husband coming in the room and then I'm going to shut my computer and stand up and kiss you because I love you. And we have many, many more years together. So you're in control of what you allow into the circle of your intention, but just because social media is out there and has an algorithm programmed to you doesn't mean you can't flip that script and use social media for your purposes. Just stay off your general feed. General feed is not going to have anything that's going to be game changing. When's the last time in your general feed that you were like, this changed my life. If I hadn't found this on my social media feed, I, I'd probably be broken a ditch somewhere. I, I, I would venture to say that has never happened to anyone ever on the planet. It might be an overgeneralization, but I sincerely doubt it. So any, any other questions, Roger? No, no further questions. Back to you. Awesome. So let's talk about the cycle of success. We just talked about the seven powers of success. So the first one was getting clear. What's our mission? What's our purpose? Then we get conscious about where we are. We create our future. We commit to the plan. We have accountability. And, and when things come into our atmosphere, we count the cost and put it through the filter of our first six steps. That leads us into a cycle of success where we have a clear purpose. Do you guys see this little blue ball? I left this here on purpose because it's shiny, right? Does it draw your attention? It draws my attention. I saw it there and I almost put it away. And then I'm like, this is actually representative of the problem that we have is that a, li a little light ball comes up somewhere and we're like, oh, where's she going with that? What is that? So I've actually tried not to use it too much, but that's the reason it's there to remind me of my purpose, which is to defeat the little blue ball. I'm not going to, not going to do the blue ball. So the cycle of success, we have a clear purpose. We have a plan. We have a plan because we know where we are and we know where we're going. So then comes the third part of the cycle and that's relentless commitment to mastering our plan and our purpose. 
And most shiny objects don't fit. They, they don't fit in with relentless commitment to mastering our purpose in life. When we have that and we put it into practice with consistency and accountability, we're going to have success. So that core of accountability and consistency leads to success, which feeds our purpose. It, it feeds the knowledge and the confidence that we have that we're doing what we need to be doing to fulfill our mission in life. So let, let's have some hard talk because this is real, right? Our businesses are real. Our families are real. These are important things that we're, that we're talking about. So let's talk about how to fail. I, I'm an entrepreneur. More, more than that, I'm an entrepreneur who has a certain resistance to authority. So if someone says to me, Rebecca, these are the seven steps you have to follow to defeat shiny object syndrome. In my mind... I probably won't, wouldn't say this to the pre presenter, but in my mind, I'm going to be like, yeah, that second step, yeah, I, don't, I don't probably need that one. Uh, um, I, I basically know that, so I'm not going to take the time to really get conscious. I'm going to skip a couple steps because I, know, <laughs> because I know better. Every step is necessary. Every step builds on the other. So if you want to guarantee you, in a year, if I were to meet you on the street, you would still be talking about... I just have ADHD of entrepreneurship. I just can't focus. Skip a step. And that, that's, that's what happens. The second way that will almost guarantee failure is to be accountable, have that core accountability that we've talked about to someone that you know. So someone that lives in your house, to your best friend, your ride or die, or your spouse. No, that's not going to work out. Why is that not going to work out? Because your spouse loves you and they want you to be happy. And that doesn't go along with relentless mastery of your purpose in life. My husband, my husband loves me better than I love myself. That is a true fact. He's the best man I've ever known, but he gives me excuses. I didn't even think about, right? So he, he's the first person to say, babe, you've been doing so good on your diet. It's okay. Ha have a martini, have dessert. You've been working so hard. You deserve it. It's okay to sleep in. It's okay. Take a day off. Treat yourself because he loves me and he wants me to be happy. It's not great for accountability. And more than that, let's just, let's just be honest for a second. If he were my accountability partner, for instance, for fitness, and we were on date night and he raised his eyebrow at me when I got dessert, oh, that would be bad. That would not be good at all <laughs> because he should know better. He's my husband, right? So core accountability with people who know and love you doesn't work out. You need that accountability to be to someone that you respect and that you, not that you don't respect your spouse and that you don't want to let down, whose core mission is in life is not to make you happy, whose core mission in their relationship to you is to empower your relentless commitment to your mission. Someone who, when you meet with them the next week, the last thing you want to do is go, I didn't do that. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't do it again. No, that, that's, that's what you're looking for with core accountability. The third, the third thing that people do that causes them to fall prey to shiny object syndrome, again, is to focus on one area of life. So we're going to just focus on our business and we're, we're going to be so focused that we're going to ignore our husband and our kids and our health because all that matters is building this business right now. Eventually, what happens is that you, those other areas of your life will force you to pay attention to them to the detriment of the business that you've built. So incremental action on every area is necessary. And it, it doesn't have to be big things, right? Like in relationship, if you're focused totally on your business, but, but you're married and you love your spouse, just taking a moment to close your screen and look your husband in the eyes, lets him know that he's important to you. That's all it takes. It doesn't take any time at all but it makes them feel important and it lets you focus on all the areas of your life. So the last thing is to submit to shiny object kryptonite. So this is how we get around step seven, how we justify the cost, right? So the cost is, as an example, if I'm a course creator, well, if I'm a course creator, I probably need a course on Facebook ads and I probably need another course on copywriting. And the way that I justify those things is that 
that's going to make my course better. It's going to get it to more people. So I'm going to justify spending that money and distracting myself without admitting that I'm not going to spend the time to be relentlessly committed to being an expert at Facebook ads or being an expert at shiny object syndrome. So I'm going to give you an example of this that just happened in, I'm sorry, I keep looking at the clock. I just don't want to, I love this topic and I can get, I can get carried away. So recently I, I, as a mom and a mother and an entrepreneur, I have a lot of shoulds in my life. (laughs) And anybody resonate with shoulds in life? I have a lot of shoulds. I should be able to have a clean house. I should be able to homeschool my kids through college if they want. I should be able to do foster care and have a business and um, have a passionate marriage. And I should be fiercely fit, like sun's out, guns out in Austin. I should be able to do all those things. And so I was, I was kind of griping at my kids the other day about the house because it was messy. I'm like, guys, come on, we can do this. And, and all of a sudden I'm like, you know what? There are people in this world who love to clean. They love it. They love it. And so I found someone like that who loves to clean and I brought her in and she cleans my house. My house is clean now. And guess what that's done? It has given me joy and it has given me more time to spend on my integral purpose, helping entrepreneurs maximize their mission in life, defeating shiny object syndrome, going beyond accountability. Just that one decision. She's fulfilling her mission and she's empowering me to fulfill my mission. So that jack of all trades, master of none, it gets us. We think we have to learn all uh, all of the things. I have a client who's an NLP expert. He does neuro-linguistic programming. And a month ago, he talked to me. He's like, Rebecca, I just spent $5,000 on a copywriting course. And my jaw went, you are not a copywriter. You're a neuro-linguistic programmer. That's your superpower. What are you doing? He's like, oh, I did do that. I'll see if I can get my money back. <laughs> I'm like, you're not a copywriter. That's not what you do. That's not your purpose in life, but it is someone else's. So because we're all unique and powerful, we can pour into each other's missions because we're all different. So really when we choose to be jack of all trades, we're cheating other people out of fulfilling their mission and and not allowing them to help us fulfill ours. It goes around. It's a cycle of success that includes all of us because we're all different. So these are the steps. So really think about them. Which one is going to be the one that trips you up? If I talk to you in a month or a quarter, if I meet you, Muhammad, are you going to still talk to me about squirrels and, and chasing and not being able to focus and multiple, multiple, multiple? Or are you like, nope, I got it. I I know exactly where I'm going and these are my streams and they all relate to my purpose. Rebecca, that's a nice nice segue into another question from Muhammad. I'm passionate about two topics and I can't let go of one and focus on one only. Is this a mistake if I work on both? Maybe. Um, So... Muhammad, as, as, a, as a woman, there are, there are women out there who would say, women can do all things. We can have the job. We can have the babies. We can cook the food. We can, do, we can do all things. And you know what? That's true. And it's true for you too. What's not true is that we can always do all of those things all at the same time. So I would ask you two questions about your passions. Are they related in any way? which one, and and maybe they both do, but which one serves to advance your mission in life, what you're here for, which one is that? Are they, are they able to integrate in any way? Do they work together or possibly can you focus on one and then focus on the other one in six months, get this one up and profitable and then focus on the next one. There's, there's in, in Texas, we say there's a lot of ways to skin that cat. So you don't have to ditch all your dreams. If you, if you don't have just one dream, and really, who does? <laughs> who does just have one dream? I'm not saying you have to sacrifice all of that. I'm saying put it in the context of your integral mission in this world and see how the pieces fit in. 
And maybe they fit in all right now, or maybe they fit in in stages. We can do all things, maybe not all at the same time. And, and that's okay. Because when you're ready to chase that thing, it's going to be ready for you. So I would, I would ask you to consider those things. And any other questions, Roger? No further questions. All righty. Well, let's move on. Ooh. Okay. So a couple more hard things, and then we're going to get to the good stuff. Uh, most people will not defeat shiny object syndrome. I, ha I hate to say it. And, and I've talked about this a little bit, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. But being relentlessly focused and to mastering your purpose, it's hard. It's hard and it's sometimes painful. Getting, getting clear, getting conscious of where you're actually at, asking those hard questions, it, it's hard. Like really going to the doctor and getting an assessment of my health. I didn't, I didn't like it. Going to the dentist. I don't, I don't like that either. Um, how many followers do I have? I, I don't necessarily want to think about that. <laughs> They're hard questions. We don't want to look at it. We just want to do the fun stuff. Accountability can be annoying. It can, seriously, because I didn't feel like it this week. I'm an entrepreneur. I should be able to say that. Okay, you can say that, but it's not going to get you to the future that you created. In balance, consistency can be a burden. It really can. I mean, these are real things, right? This is, this is not get rich quick. It's not for wannabe gurus. It's not for opportunists. It's not for happy hobbyists. If you have a digital marketing business and it's your happy hobby, then let it be your happy hobby. That's great. No problem. But if you want to master your marketplace, if you want to create the vision that you have for your business or for your relationship or for your physical health, the fact is relentless commitment to mastery is required. doesn't mean you can't ever take a day off. It just means that the constant focus is required. And most people don't want to pay that price. And that's why we, we chase shiny things because it, it, it alleviates the pressure of focusing. But the pressure of focusing will lead us into that cycle of success that we talked about. So if you are the next success story, if you're relentlessly committed, if you know your purpose and you're committed to leaving a legacy and not having an, ex an expensive hobby, I promise you the seven powers to defeat shiny object syndrome will definitely work for you. No question. So if we're reviewing the process, we talked about clarity, getting clear about our purpose, getting conscious of where we are, creating the future that we want to have, and codifying a plan, reverse engineering our goal to what we need to do every single day, committing to be consistent, having core accountability partners, and when things come, counting the cost, really determining if that feeds into our focus or if it doesn't. So when I... I realized all of these things. So in addition to the other things that I do, I'm part of a doctoral program. And, and a lot of this information came as part of my PhD. And so I decided, well, let's, let's see if it'll work. So I gathered five of my clients, people I respected that were already successful in their own right. And I said, we're going to do this. We're going to try it. We're going to try it for a quarter. So we developed the Beyond Accountability Movement. It's not a course. It's not video training. It's not anything. It is a movement. It's a movement of people who are relentlessly committed to their purpose in life. And we, we went through every step. We got clear about what our individual purposes were. We asked all the, all the hard and painful questions about where we were in each area of life. And we created the future that we wanted to create. We met with each other once a week and we checked in every day because we had daily things in each area that we wanted to get done. Not, and again, I know that that might sound overwhelming, but not big things, right? All of the big things I was able to get done before 10 a.m., which is fantastic because then the rest of the day is frosting and I like sweets. So that was wonderful. Um, so at the end of that first quarter, and we, we launched this at the beginning of COVID. So COVID kind of happened in the, in the middle, which is a little, I mean, if you love adventure, that was a kind of a scary adventure. I wasn't quite sure where the, where the safety breaks were. But at the end of that first quarter, here's what had happened. I, so sweets are my issue. I've had seven children. That does something to a girl. Um, I had lost 10% of my body fat in three months. And and I wasn't super overweight to start with. I, I've been super overweight in my life, but I, 
I wasn't this time, but I lost 10% of my body fat. But the thing that made me the proudest was I finished a whole beach body program, <laughs> which I know it sounds silly, but I've been doing beach body since I was like 25. I've never finished a program, not one time, not never. And I did. And that felt really good. It made me feel good to be over 40, to be a grandmother of almost five children. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm taking it on. I felt fierce. It was wonderful. I had another client, um, Lucy, and she, she had been married for 15 years and she, she was done. She's like, this is not working out. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to do this anymore. So she had decided prior to, to doing this with me that she was going to file for divorce. And I said, give it three months. So we set up a program for her where she did small things. She held her husband's hand. She shut her computer lid when he walked in the room, little things, nothing, nothing major, no, nothing major. Now at the end of three months, I'm not going to tell you that she was uh, madly in love, <laughs> but they're still married and they're working on it. The best one was my entrepreneur friend. She was doing great. She was $5,000 a month in income. At the end of three months, her last month in the beyond accountability movement was $45,000 in revenue. Daily, small, incremental actions that she was committed to every day every week, reviewing and staying relentlessly focused. It works in any area of life. So beyond accountability movement is, is what I do. It's my passion. It's my mission. Um, and it is one-on-one -on -one mentoring through the process. It's not a course. <laughs> it's not a shiny object. I, I, there are no videos involved. It is one-on-one -on -one mentorship to create your plan, figure out where you are, create where you want to go, total commitment to your success, your purpose, customized tools to serve you. So success requires that relentless focus on your mission because you can do what no one else can. You have a special ability no one else has. It's your purpose. So as my gift to you, I would love to give you, I, I've given you all the tools that you need to do on your own. Take 2021 by storm. Take the last two weeks of the year by storm. I have at this, at this link below uh, an accountability blueprint that you can utilize in your own life and put it to work for yourself. Um, and, and you can do it. All, you, you know everything there is to know to be relentlessly focused, but there's a lot that we didn't cover. And I know I'm running out of time. I knew it was going to happen. Um, the things we didn't cover, how do you discover your purpose if you don't know it? How do you determine where you are? What are all the questions you need to ask before you, you know you've covered all the bases? What metrics do you use for every area? What metrics do you use for entrepreneurship? Are they different for coaches and course creators and copywriters? And, and what about brick and mortar? Different metrics for those? Um, how do you get totally real and relevant with yourself? How do you manage to stay consistent? All of these things matter. And the fact is, we, and we all know deep down, even people with authority issues like myself, if I could have done it for myself, I would have done it for myself. If I could have done it alone, I would have done it alone, but I couldn't. I needed community to help people with other superpowers than mine. So we created the Beyond Accountability movement. We only open it up once a quarter and we can only take 30 people at a time because it is so intense and we revolutionize results. And I would love to offer you an opportunity to participate in that program at blueskybusiness.com backslash beyond. Um, and I think it is in the chat. I hope yes, it is. It has been my honor and privilege to speak with you this morning, Roger. I'm eternally grateful for the opportunity. Well, Rebecca, you are one of the most uh, punctual trainers that VBN has had the pleasure of having. Thank you very, very much. Uh, you've been a real eye-opener. Uh, yeah, a solution is now available, and it's called Rebecca. Uh, I thank you on behalf of the participants. Uh, I, uh, we'll, we'll keep the lines of communication open for one last question, if there are any. And if I don't see any in, anything in the next few seconds, we'll shut her down in respect of your time and get on with your day. Rebecca, thank you so, so much for sharing your wisdom, your experience, uh, your humor, and your unique uh, brand of Texas with us. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much, Roger. It was, a, it was a joy to be with you all this morning. A joy for us too. Thank you so much.
Goodbye now. We'll see you again sometime really soon. Thank you again, Rebecca. You were. Bye, y'all. Have a good day.